We're going to come here to Ephesians chapter 6. Some of you may remember back earlier this year, I spoke from this passage of Scripture uh, in talking about faith. And I want to do so again this morning. I want to speak to you about the importance of faith in our witnessing. The importance of faith in our witnessing. Ephesians chapter number 6, and let's begin reading there in verse number 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10. I should mention that... Uh, this, we're coming down to a final countdown for uh, Colin and Ashley. Colin Noel and Ashley Johnson are both going off to the States for college uh, this summer. Uh, Colin's going to be in Florida at a Christian college. Ashley's going to be in Indiana at a Bible college pursuing the will of the Lord. Amen. And so we're sure going to miss having them around. I'm going to miss my daughter being here. and She's been playing the piano for us a lot on Sundays. And... Uh, but I'm thankful that she's uh, pursuing God's will and will guide her along those steps over the next coming years. And we sure appreciate your prayers for her as well. Well, let's get here to the Bible. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador, ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Even in Sunday school this morning, we reference Corinthians where it tells us that we are ambassadors for Christ. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation and we are to speak up for Christ. And as Paul asks here, he says, remember that I'm an ambassador. And he says, pray for me and pray for an open door as the gospel is given and pray for me that I may boldly speak the gospel and speak the truth and so on. We will not be effective without God helping us, without God's power. We need faith in our witnessing. Let's have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd speak to us this morning, uh, challenge us from your word to be the witnesses for Christ that you long for us to be, that we may share your wonderful gospel, the gospel message with others around us, please. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We understand very clearly from the Bible that a person cannot be born again. Uh, a person cannot be a child of God. A person cannot have a home in heaven. A person cannot have eternal life without placing their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Salvation comes only by faith. It's only by God's grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We learned earlier this year about the importance of uh, picking up the shield of faith so that we can overcome all the fiery darts of Satan. And one week earlier this year, maybe back in March or so, we talked about the fiery dart of doubt and the fiery dart of temptation, the fiery dart of laziness, the fiery dart of criticism, and the fiery dart of procrast procrastination, and how we need to use the shield of faith to overcome those fiery darts of the wicked one. A few months ago, we talked about the importance of faith in our prayer lives. To have an effective prayer life, we need to pray in faith. Uh, this morning, I ask you please to, to, to give me your heart and, and open up your ears to listen and open up your mind to, to hear what God wants to say to you. Uh, 
The Bible talks in Revelation and uses the expression over and over, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. And I pray that you would have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God wants to speak to you today. I want to talk this morning about the importance of faith in our witnessing. Faith in our witnessing. Do you know that Satan wants to hinder you and me from being the witnesses for Christ that God would have us to be? That shouldn't come as a surprise. Satan wants to hinder all that we would do for Christ. He wants to hinder us from living faithfully for Christ and walking with God and uh, living the kind of life that God would want us to. Uh, Satan himself, Lucifer himself, he rebelled against God and he would love for us to rebel against God. He'd love for us to uh, not want to have anything to do with God or to live for Christ or follow Christ. He, he would love for us to procrastinate in doing the things for Christ that we ought to do. Uh, he'd love for us to become uh, overcome by laziness that we just want to make no effort to do the things that Christ would want us to. He'd love to make us doubt even our own salvation so that we wouldn't have any confidence in boldly sharing the gospel with others. He would love through criticism and different things to try to discourage us from doing what we ought. He'd love to tempt us to sin that we might fail and fall and have a bad testimony. Satan wants to hinder us, no doubt about it. Jesus Christ wants us, though, to follow him. You know, Jesus said in the in the book of oh, was it Matthew five nineteen or Mark five nineteen? I'm not sure which. Maybe maybe Matthew five nineteen. He said, "Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men." Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus wants us to follow him, and Jesus wants us to become uh, fishers of men. Maybe it's chapter four. Chapter 4. He wants us to be fishers of men. Some of those who were called to be the first apostles or disciples, they were fishermen, weren't they? they their occupation was that of working in a boat and dragging their nets and, and uh, fishing out on the Sea of Galilee. But Jesus said to some of them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I'm going to give you now a higher call, calling, a higher occupation, something even more worthwhile, where you will fish for men, that souls might come into the kingdom of, of God, the kingdom of Christ. While Christ wants us to work for him and work with him and be busy uh, witnessing and being fishers of men, Satan is busy offering us excuses. Excuses. Oh yes, Satan's going to do all that he can to distract people and keep people from church. He's going to do all that he can to distract people or deceive people or blind people from getting saved. Satan's going to do all he can to try to distract people and keep people preoccupied with going here and there and enjoying themselves. I thank God that more restrictions are starting to be lifted and there's a little bit more freedom and so on for people to go around and do this and that. But... And one of the things, sadly, that ends up happening is that the more freedom that there is, the more sometimes people are using that freedom to find some other things to do <laughs> rather than go to church, rather than to get involved in witnessing for Christ and so on. You know, Satan wants us to be focused on ourselves. Satan wants to keep us so busy that... We don't have time for church. We can't be faithful to church. We're too busy with other things to maybe get involved in the work of, of soul winning or witnessing or passing out gospel tracts or the work of the Lord. Satan would like to make us too busy, too tired, too distracted, that we don't care much about being a witness or a soul winner for Christ. Do you know that the reality is this? Satan, Satan knows that he's doomed. He knows that in the end, God will win. He will be defeated. But the reality is, he'd like to take everybody that he possibly could to hell with him. Hell is real, and the lake of fire is, is going to be the eternal judgment of, of Satan, the devil. One day, he will be bound and cast into the lake of fire for all eternity, and he'd love to take everybody he could with him. 
Satan for Christians wants it to become a wasted summer. A wasted summer. A wasted opportunity. You know, we have an opportunity now where this pandemic has made people think about all kinds of things. And, and probably more than ever before in recent decades at least, people have more thought about eternity. People have more thought about death and dying. What an opportunity this ought to be for us as Christians who know the truth and know the way to eternal life to share the gospel with people and show people how they don't have to fear death or dying. They can have life eternal. They can be saved. They can become a child of God and know that they're going to live forever. But Satan would love for this to be a wasted time, wasted opportunity. If Satan can get us busy with doing the things that we want to do and keep us from doing any of the things that God would want us to do, then it can, Satan can cause it to be a wasted summer. You know what a sad cry it will be for many people one day where Jeremiah says, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. You know, the Bible does speak of a harvest of souls, and we're to sow the seed of the Word of God. We're to sow it with tears and compassion and love for lost people. Knowing that one day if we sow enough seed and share the gospel with enough people, that we will reap and we will see souls come to Christ. There will be fruit. John chapter 4 speaks of that. Psalm 126. We spoke about that a few weeks ago. But sadly, for some, the testimony may be this, or the cry may be this, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Do you know John 4 warns us that there will come a time where harvest time is past. The harvest is past. The time for reaping is past. May God help us as Christians to take the glorious message of the gospel of Christ and share it with people. Share it with everybody we can. I'm praying that God will give me opportunities to share the gospel with people. I, I pray that those we've maybe met online or those that have visited church here will give me an opportunity to sit with them and share the gospel with them. I'm praying that God will allow us to meet people when we go out soul winning on Thursdays or Saturdays and allow us to share the gospel with them that they might hear about Christ and believe on Christ and be saved. I don't want there to be that testimony for so many people that the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. You know, Satan will try to get Christians all preoccupied, all excited and involved each week in different things. He'll try to offer us excuses for why we uh, cannot do what God would want us to do. Thank God for the freedoms we're starting to get to have again. And, if it allows people to travel more and enjoy some holidays more or do something with their family, that's great. That's awesome. Lord willing, I'm going to go away with my wife this fall for a few days. At least it's planned to. We're supposed to. But I saw some things last night that maybe wonder if we'll ever get to do that or not. I don't know. I hope that people get to enjoy some family time and vacation time some rest, rest and relaxation time, but, but let me warn you, Satan would love for us to be so busy focusing on ourselves that coming to church just becomes a second thought, a third thought, a fourth thought. If I've accomplished everything else on my bucket list and everything else I'd like to do this summer and everything else I, I want to do, then maybe I'll have time for church or then maybe I'll have time for soul winning or, or, or maybe next year I'll go soul winning again or maybe, maybe eventually I'll go soul winning again. Listen, Jesus is going to come back again before some people ever get to go soul winning. We're going to have to purpose in our heart to get involved in the work of the Lord. I don't know how soon it's going to be, but I truly believe that we're getting so close to the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And now is a time for Christians to be faithful to the Lord and faithful to witness and so on. We see what is taking place in our world. We see all the troubles in our world today. We see the nations of the world that are forsaking Israel and turning on Israel. Soon it will be that Israel will no longer have an ally and the whole world will turn against her. Listen, Jesus Christ has surely got to be coming soon. 
And now is a time for us to be busy and to be witnessing for Christ and sharing the gospel. It's harvest time. Satan will give us lots of excuses and reasons why we cannot witness and why we can't go soul hunting and why we can't do this. But now is a time to seriously consider what is our responsibility as Christians to the Great Commission to get the gospel out to people, to witness to those around us. So we read a verse in Sunday school, you know, what, what good is it going to do if we gain the whole world? If we've accomplished so many uh, things and fun things for ourselves or gained and stored up all kinds of money for ourselves, but then our life's gone. Listen, let's be busy for Christ. I'm not saying let's be foolish. I'm not saying uh, don't save anything. Don't, don't prepare for a future. But, but listen, now is a time to get wholehearted and, and committed in serving Christ and giving to the Lord's work. Helping send missionaries to preach the gospel around the world. Getting involved in learning how to witness and how to be a soul winner and how to share the gospel with people. Satan will give us lots of excuses and reasons why we cannot or why we should not, but we must be busy. You know, when we go after souls, Satan is the enemy doing everything he can to keep people from, from believing in God, to keep people from believing in God's Son, Jesus Christ. Look with me at what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we'll, we'll look at a few references here this morning in the message. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 3 and 4, the Bible says this, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. We're not to hide the gospel. We're not to hide the light of the gospel, the light of Christ. Remember what the book of Matthew says? Let your light so shine before men. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine. That Sunday school song is, comes from the scriptures in Matthew chapter 5 there in verses 16 to 19. Listen, we have got to let our light shine. It should not be hid. Let the light shine. Let the gospel shine to others around us. He says here in 2 Corinthians uh, 4, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Listen, our gospel should not just be kept in the back of this parking lot, hiding where nobody out on Young Street can see it. It should be shared. It should be shared. It should be shared with our neighbors. It should be shared with our co-workers. What good is our Christianity to other people if all it is is it's, it's kind of, it's exclusive to just a couple hours on a Sunday morning. It's, it's reserved for just a place where we're only with other Christian people. And we never share it with others. Let's not hide our gospel. Hide the gospel of Christ. Let's share it. Verse 4 says this. In whom the God of this world, that's Satan, that's the devil. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. When we go after souls, Satan, the enemy, is doing everything he can to keep people from believing in God and to keep people from believing in Christ. But we're to keep giving the gospel and keep shining the light. Knowing that God has power to draw men unto himself, to draw people unto Jesus Christ that they might be saved. It's not the schemes of men that will cause us to be successful in winning the world to Christ. Most of all, it is the power of God that we need. We must not put our faith in men. We must put our faith in God. We need faith in our witnessing and faith in our soul. And listen, it's not going to be what we do that is able to somehow manipulate people into getting saved. It's going to be our faith in God's power and the power of the gospel that can make a difference in, in even those hearts that seem hard and cold to the gospel. Even those people who it seems like their mind is blinded to the gospel. There's a man who uh, teaches, he's a professor, I think, at the University of Toronto. And his mind slips me right now, but I, I watched a video one time last year. It seems like there's a man who God is working in his heart and trying to draw him to the truth. There may be people at times where we think, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll never come to Christ. They're, they're so blind. They're so lost. But listen, the gospel still works. Jesus can still save the lost. 
the rulers of the darkness of this world are, are Satan and all his his host of demons, those those one third of the angels that fell with Lucifer when he rebelled against God. We are in a spiritual warfare for the souls of men, and that spiritual battle must be fought with the weapon of prayer. It must be fought with the weapon of prayer and faith. That spiritual battle must be fought with the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know, the Bible tells us this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 5 to 7. Look what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 5 to 7. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. How can you and I have boldness in preaching and in soul winning and in sharing with others the gospel of Jesus Christ? How can we do that? We must have the power of God. We must have the power of God. We can't do it in our own strength. You know, you and I can never speak in such a way that is so fine that we can convince people. We need God's power to convince people. We need God's power to be able to convict the hardest heart and the person whose mind has been blinded by Satan. We need God's power to convict people of their need for Christ to receive the gospel. We need to do it in the strength of the Lord and in the power of His might. Back in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10, God's word uh, told us told us this. Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in yourself. No, that's not what it says. Finally, my brethren, be strong in, in some method that you've learned. No. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That sounds powerful. We have a, a, a Word of God that Hebrew says is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Listen, God's Word is a sharp sword that is powerful and effective, that can convict the, the coldest, hardest heart that the lost might come to Christ and be saved. The Bible says, verse 18, Ephesians 6, 18, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Is that the same car that drives by every Sunday now just comes around just to check us out? <laughs> Amen. Listen, we've got to do it in the power of God. We've got to pray and have God's power to be able to be effective witnesses for Christ. As we share the gospel, we can do so boldly, knowing that we are called to be ambassadors for Christ. We are representatives of Christ here on this earth. What's an ambassador? It's a representative from one country to another country. You and I are representatives of heaven here on this earth. We represent Christ. And we, when we follow the command of Christ, when we obey the Great Commission, we are doing so in the authority of Christ and with the power of Christ upon us that we can boldly preach the gospel. doesn't matter what people say. We can boldly speak for Christ because we've got the power of God backing us up. Look what it says in Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, the Gospel of Matthew, first, first book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 28, notice what Jesus said to his disciples here. Matthew 28 and verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power, all authority, all, all power is given unto me, unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 
Acts 1 and verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31, listen, it tells us how the disciples, they were there and they were gathered together and they were praying. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they became bold in preaching the gospel. Bold in speaking the gospel. And many people believed once they were filled with God's power. They spake with boldness. They spake with boldness. Listen, it is so vital that we have faith in the area of, of our soul winning and witnessing for Christ. Because you know what? Without God's power, and without that boldness, we become pretty weak and timid in and of ourselves. But knowing that we have Christ's authority and knowing that we have God's power upon us, we become bold in sharing the gospel of Christ. And that is needed today. That is so needed in August of 2021. 2021. Let me establish something first. You know, there is, there is no doubt to a person who will honestly study the Word of God that the Lord wants us to be witnesses for Him, witnesses for Christ, a soul winners for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us this in the Gospel of John, chapter 15. If you look at that with me, John chapter 15. John chapter 15 and verse 8, Jesus said these words. He said, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. And then in verse 16, John 15 and verse 16, it says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. God has chosen and ordained for us that we should bring forth fruit, bear fruit. The Bible tells us this in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. Proverbs 11, 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. The fruit of the righteous man, the fruit of a righteous person is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. God wants us to be fruitful trees. He wants us to be reaped producing. He wants other souls to be saved, other fruit to be born, other souls to come into the kingdom of God. Other people to be born again, to be saved because of our efforts to win souls, to share the gospel, to speak the truth with other people. You and I don't really get to choose to be a soul winner. We choose to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and He chooses for us to be a soul winner. Jesus said to his disciples, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. We choose to trust Christ and he chooses for us to become a, a part of the business of winning lost souls to Jesus Christ. He wants us to be involved as ambassadors for Christ in witnessing and sharing the gospel and sharing the truth and telling others how Jesus can save them and give them eternal life. But you know something? We cannot do it on our own. We can't do it on our own. Faith in God is vital. Faith to believe that God will work in hearts and faith to believe that God wants to save sinners is so important or we are almost defeated before we ever begin. Sometimes if we'll try to maybe go out witnessing and we already got a defeated spirit and we're already, oh, nobody's going to want to get saved. Nobody cares. Boy, it's pretty hard, isn't it? It's pretty hard to do it that way. But when we believe in the power of God and God's power and ability to save souls, we become so much more bold and effective in witnessing for Christ. We must have faith to believe that God will work in hearts, faith to believe that God wants to save sinners. We must have faith to believe that the Word of God is effective. Faith to believe that the Gospel is for everyone who will believe on Jesus Christ as their Savior. If we deny this truth, then we're denying the Word of God. We're calling God a liar. Now, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, but is long-suffering to us, word or toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God isn't willing for people to perish. God doesn't want people to die and go to hell. That would be the most uh, foolish and ludicrous thing ever. God doesn't want people to die and go to hell. He wants people to be saved. 
He's willing for people to be saved. It's His will for men to be saved. He wants people to be saved, but yet He gives us a choice. He wants us to share the gospel with people so that they've heard the message clearly, the gospel. Now the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever, that's anybody, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you would believe these promises that God can still save whosoever, God can still save anybody, then we don't have to be weak and mild and timid when it comes to witnessing to our co-worker, our employer, our boss, our neighbor. Now, Satan wants us to be timid. He wants us to be afraid. But we need to remember that God's not willing for any to perish. God wants the world to be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you know that that whosoever also means you if you've never trusted Christ as your personal Savior? If you've never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can leave here different today. You could have come this morning as a lost sinner who's unsaved, who doesn't have a personal relationship with God, and you could leave here this afternoon a child of God, being born again, having your sins forgiven, having a new relationship with God through Jesus Christ, knowing that you're on your way to heaven. For those of you that are already saved this morning, may I say that God wants to use us to be witnesses to those around us. God wants to use us to be witnesses of what Christ has done in our own hearts and lives. But to truly influence others for the kingdom of God, we must have the power of God. The power of God is vital. The power of God is necessary. We must go forth witnessing and so on in the strength and in the power of God. In the power that the Lord Jesus Christ gives us through God's Spirit. I want you to consider with me this morning that we need faith. We need faith in our witnessing. You know, this is an area where we must uh, war a good warfare and fight, fight the good fight of faith. This area of witnessing is an area where Satan, he, he fights against us. He opposes us. He tries to hinder us. He tries to discourage us. He tries to give us excuses. He tries to make us miss opportunities. Listen, Satan fights against God's people to try to keep Christians from, from going souling or from being good witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan fights against lost people because he wants to keep them from getting saved. Satan wants to keep everybody he can as children of Satan and children of darkness rather than being, becoming children of light, children of God. Satan wants to stop you from being a witness for Christ. And it's an area where you and I have got to determine, I'm going to hold up the shield of faith and do battle against the enemy. Because I know he tries to discourage me, and I know he tries to give me excuses, and I know he tries to make me meek and timid and not want to be bold for Christ. And so I'm going to have to use the shield of faith to fight the fight, to war a good warfare, and determine to be the witness for Christ that God wants me to be. I'm going to need to hold up that shield of faith to fight off some of those fiery darts of Satan that he's hurling my way. That fiery dart of laziness that would make me not want to go. That fiery dart of doubt that would make me think, oh, people don't want to hear it. What that fiery dart of excuses. Whatever excuse we may make. Why we can't. Why we're too busy. Satan will do everything he can to keep Christians from doing what God wants them to do. This morning, why don't you decide to have faith in God and believe that God could use you to win some lost soul to Jesus Christ. God could use you to win some lost person to Jesus Christ. Not trusting in yourself, and not trusting in your own strength, and not trusting in your own ability, and not trusting in your, your own words, but instead asking God to help you and believing that God will help you. You know, witnessing is God's command for every Christian. From the youngest to the oldest, Mark 16, 15 says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go is pretty clear, right? God tells us to go. But do you know who the ye is in that verse? It's you and me. It's every one of us. Here this afternoon, we got some bigger yees and some thinner yees. We got some taller yees and some shorter yees. We've got all kinds of yees. We got younger yees and older yees and more educated yees and less educated yees. We've got, we've got children yees and teenager yees and um, maybe a few senior yees. And, you know, we've got all these different yees. 
We've got yees of different nationalities and so on, but we're all yees. We're all those ones that God is saying to us, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And God wants to use us. Acts 1.8, Jesus said, ye, ye shall be witnesses unto me. If we're not obeying Christ's command, then we are not obeying God. If we are not obeying Christ's command, Jessica, then we are not obeying God. We are failing God when we fail to do what He says. We are failing God when we fail to do what He says. Do you know witnessing is for all Christians? You don't have to have had a certain education or have, uh, you know, have been a Christian for so many decades. In Mark 5, the, when the maniac got saved, Christ told him right away, you go home and you tell your family, you tell your friends what Christ has done for you. We just be, need to be willing to say, Lord, use me. Lord, would you use me to be a good witness? Would you use me to share the gospel? Would you use me to witness to my neighbors? Would you use me to witness to my co-workers? Lord, would you use me to witness to somebody in this town? Use me, Lord. There was an unsaved lady that came through her major surgery in a great way. And the surgeon would come to check on her in the hospital room every day. One day when the doctor walked into the room, the lady said to him, Sir, I wonder if you would sign my special album as, a, as a, something to remember. That way I can have a remembrance of you and, and how you helped me, and it's meant so much to me. And the surgeon said, Oh, I'd be glad to do that. Do you mind if I write a prescription in here with my name? And she said, I'll write what you want to. The doctor signed his name in, in her, her little album, and, and he wrote the following verse. He, he wrote this. He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, He is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. Psalm 34, 8. And the doctor left it there at her bedside. As a result of the simple testimony or witness of that surgeon, that woman ended up getting saved. Ultimately, as a result of what started with what that doctor wrote to her. She said this, when I, left the, when I left the hospital and I gained my strength, I ended up going to, the, going to church for the first time. And I heard the message of Jesus Christ and I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. May I say that we ought to be witnesses for Christ no matter where, we, where it may be. Let's not be ashamed to tell the story of Jesus Christ than to tell others what He has done for us. The simple witness of that surgeon helped cause that lady to go to church and to get saved. We need faith for witnessing, faith to believe that God can still save and the gospel can still save. We can't depend upon our words. We must use God's word. And we can't trust in our own power. We must depend upon God's power. Listen, listen, listen. Don't worry about li hua. Li, li, li. Just, just listen. Witnessing is always blessed of God. God wants us to be busy sowing the seed of the gospel. Sowing the seed. God promises that His Word will not return void. Sometimes we can become frustrated. Why, why doesn't th things grow up from that seed as quick as we'd like it to? Why, why don't we see as much fruit as we'd like when we plant those seeds? Why, why, why aren't those things doing so well? Just keep sowing the seed. Sow as much seed as you possibly can. God's word will not return void. God promises to bless his word. We ought to do everything we possibly can to get the gospel into every home in our city and to do it again and again and again. The greatest need of our city is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus can save sinners and God's word can change people's lives. If we're faithful to witnessing, then God will bless it and God will also bless you. God will bless you. May I remind you again that Satan is the enemy that wants to, wants to hinder people from getting saved and wants to keep Christians from, from being witnesses for Christ. Satan wants to oppose that. Satan wants to hinder us. But we can take up the shield of faith and be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Fiery darts of excuses. Fiery darts of procrastination. Fiery darts of laziness. Apathy. Do you know why many times we don't witness or don't speak up for Christ like we should? The reason is because we become victims of Satan's fiery darts. Satan scares us. He scares us, if we'll be honest. He causes us to fear. 
and we say, I can't do it. I I'm afraid to speak to people. Or, or I wouldn't want to embarrass anyone. The truth is that many times you and me, we both, we, we, we don't witness to others like we should because we become afraid. We become fearful. And what we need to do is hold up the shield of faith. We need to withstand against those fiery darts that the enemy hurls our way. The Bible says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It's not, it's not God that gives us fear. Who is it then? It's the devil who wants to make us fearful and afraid. God wants to give us boldness through the power of His Holy Spirit. It's Satan who hurls at us the fiery dart of fear to keep us from witnessing for Christ. It's Satan who hurls the fiery dart of procrastination to give us excuses to make us think that, well, we can just put it off and we'll worry about it later. Witnessing will always be blessed of God and we must do what God wants us to do. Somebody said this, in soul winning, we have to empty ourselves and ask the Holy Spirit of God to fill us with His power and believe that He can use us. We need to stir ourselves to hearts of compassion, realizing that there's people around us that need the Lord. There's people around us that need our Savior. They need Jesus Christ in their life. We need to learn to share the gospel with urgency and fervency because Jesus Christ is coming back again. There was a preacher in the country of England by the name of Mr. Roland Hill. And he was once speaking in a very large auditorium. And in the middle of his sermon, Lady Anne Erskine, who, di er Erskine, who did not often attend church, but who was always seen at every prominent concert and event, she made her grand entrance in the middle of the church service where Mr. Roland Hill was preaching. She had been previously heard to say that, that she would sometime like to hear Mr. Hill preach uh, just to please herself. When she entered that large auditorium, the entire audience turned to see her as she made her entrance. And in the midst of it all, the preacher recognized who she was, a very well-known socialite, if you will, in England. All at once, he stopped his sermon abruptly and he shouted, My friends, my friends, I have something here for sale today. Everyone was startled. The preacher continued, I'm going to auction something worth more than all the crowns of Europe. The soul of Lady Anne Erskine. The preacher cried out, Will anyone bid for her soul? Will anyone bid for her soul? Wait, wait. I think I hear a bid. Who bids? The world. The lady's surprise was indescribable. As now everyone's eyes were focused upon her. World, world, what will you give for her soul? The preacher said. Oh, I will give pleasures, and I will give honor, and I will give riches, and a life of luxury and good times. And nothing more? World, will you give nothing more for her soul? Then I say that the price is too small. For what would it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Then the preacher continued. Wait, wait. I hear another bid for the soul of Lady Anne. Who bids? Ah, it's Satan. I will give her the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. She can satisfy all her desires with pleasures and anything that seems good to her flesh. And what do you demand in return? Her soul. Her soul, laughed Satan. Then Satan, your price is too high. You are a deceiver, a liar, and the father of all lies. The pleasure that you will give is only temporary. But the end result is death and entrapment and bondage and a snare. Wait. Wait. I, I can hear another bid. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. I have already given my life for the Lady Anne. I have poured out my heart's blood for her. I paid the ransom for the whole world when I died upon the cross. I will bring peace to her soul. I will bring freedom from bondage of sin. I will bring forgiveness and justification. I will clothe her with a garment of righteousness. I will give her an eternal home with me, a mansion in heaven. And what dost thou ask in return, Lord Jesus? Her sins must be given over to me, and her faith must be placed in me. Then, Lord Jesus, thou shalt have her. And the preacher turned to the lady and asked, Lady Erskine, are you satisfied? 
Lady Anne Erskine answered yes that day. She answered yes with a loud, firm voice while deep emotion passed through the whole meeting. And from that moment on and from that day forward, her life was changed. Why was it changed? It was changed because she said yes to Jesus Christ that day. And through the remainder of her life, it is said that Lady Anne Erskine lived for Jesus Christ and she ended up using all her wealth to help others as Jesus Christ would. Do you understand that even this morning, the devil is pleading and begging for the soul of everyone that is here under my voice? The devil would love to have your soul. Satan would love to have your soul. The world would love to have your soul. But Jesus Christ wants your soul. He died on the cross and shed his blood to purchase your soul and to purchase your redemption. The devil is pleading for your soul and the world is pleading for your soul. But Jesus Christ is standing up and he's looking down from heaven. And he's saying, I already paid the price for your soul. I died on the cross of Calvary to redeem your soul from hell. I shed my blood on the cross because I loved you and because I wanted you to be saved from your sins. I wanted you to be kept from the clutches of Satan. I wanted you to become God's child. Won't you believe this morning? Won't you place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? Whosoever to call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'll believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the Savior of the world who died on the cross to be your personal Savior, so that you could be born again, so that you could have a relationship with God, your Creator, you can be forgiven of your sins and born again, quickened, made alive, brought to life, experience the new life in Jesus Christ that God wants for you. Lost person, come to Jesus Christ and trust Him as your personal Savior. Saved person, you've already escaped the clutches of Satan, and he can't take you to hell with him. But Satan wants to keep you from keeping anybody else from going to hell. Satan wants to give you excuses to keep you too busy from having time to serve Christ. Too busy for church. Too busy for soul winning. Too busy for witnessing. Too, too, too whatever. He wants to give you excuses. He wants you to procrastinate. He wants to make you afraid. Satan wants to hurl all his fiery darts at you to cause you to fear, to not be involved, to think it's somebody else's job or somebody else's responsibility. He wants you to become preoccupied with self that, that life is about you and I can't use my money to send missionaries. I got to take care of me. I got no time to serve Christ or go soul winning. I got to do what I want to do. Satan is the adversary of God who wants to do everything he possibly can to keep people from getting saved and going to heaven because Satan hates God. Satan hates God. He wants people to be kept in the kingdom of darkness, in the kingdom of Satan, the God of this world, rather than being saved and turning to becoming children of light, children of God. Why don't you commit yourself today to get involved in obeying the Great Commission? Decide today to get involved in soul winning training and learning how to become a witness for Christ. Get involved in sending the gospel around the world through faith promise giving for world missions. Decide, God, I want you to use me. Lord, I want you to use me. Lord, I want to be a witness and have faith that God can empower you and enable you and that His Word is powerful and the gospel is effective and souls can be saved. If you'll trust Him to just simply use you doesn't have to be that, oh, we, we can speak like so-and-so. God can use you. If you'll say, Lord, use me, I want to be used. Commit yourself. Commit yourself. Listen, the time is short. The time is short. The book of Revelation talks about it. Do you know why the devil, you know why Satan, you know why the adversary is so busy? He knows that his time is short. But that means time is also short for us to gather the harvest, for us to witness for Christ, for us to get the gospel to the world, for us to witness to our neighbors or our co-workers or our employer or whoever. 
What a difference it could make if we would just pray and say, God, give me boldness. God, fill me with your power. God, use me. God, help me to be a witness for you. And we would actively start seeking to witness to people around us and sowing seeds of the gospel. God can use us. But we're going to have to exercise faith when it comes to witnessing and so on. Otherwise, we'll be timid. We'll be afraid. The, the fiery darts of Satan will make us procrastinate or not do it or have excuses why we can't do it. Why we can't go. Why we can't give. Why we can't come. Why we can't be involved. Why we can't... May God help us. May God help us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Please convict us that we would become for you the soul winners and witnesses that you want us to be. Help us to realize how desperately important faith is needed. The shield of faith to quench those fiery darts of the wicked one who would love for us to procrastinate, love for us to make excuses, love for us to become fearful and afraid. Love for us to doubt, love for us to say it can't be done. Love for us to be distracted or too busy. God, may you use us. Lord, please use us to be your witnesses. Lord, please make us fishers of men. Please make us your witnesses. Please help us to be good ambassadors. Please give us boldness and power to witness for you. We might not waste this harvest, waste this summer, waste this opportunity to share the gospel with lost people. Use our church and use every single one of us, Lord, in a greater way to be witnesses for Christ, to get involved in soul in Him, to give to world missions, world evangelism, and send the gospel around the world. Help us to be faithful in these days. Give us boldness to witness for Christ, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here this morning or you're somebody who watches this online and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I plead with you. If you have doubts in your mind or you're not sure that you're saved, please talk to us. Please reach out to us. We want to be able to show you from God's Word how you can know for sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Heaven is your home, that you're a child of God. If you watch online, we'd love to send you a gospel book that would show you the difference between the religions of the world and what the truth of the Bible really is. Jesus Christ has done everything necessary to make a way for our salvation. We must simply trust in Him. I'd love to give you that gospel booklet if you'll reach out and ask us for it. Real quick, Brother Aver is going to come and take a few minutes and give us some updates about some of our missionaries. Well, let's uh, update on the Lema family in Cuba. And uh, they're asking us to pray for, for God's grace to handle life in a difficult country. can imagine uh, waiting in line for hours to get gasoline and, and, and food services, things like that. So keep the Labas uh, in your prayers. And they're asking for uh, prayers with, for safety from political turmoil. You've heard some of the things in the news that's happened there. And so, um, and so they're asking for prayer with that. But certainly pray for, for their freedom, but their ultimate freedom in Christ in Cuba. And that's what the Labas are there to share the gospel before. And so um, they are going to be taking an upcoming furlough. That's just a trip back to the States. They've not done so in many years. And so they're going to report to some churches uh, and see some people they haven't seen in quite a long time that have been helping them stay on the field. So pray for that. Uh, but they're also asking us to pray that they can get a second opinion about Mrs. Leva's uh, health condition. And so uh, maybe through this process, see some other doctors get some better answers uh, for her health. And so do, do be in prayer for the Leva family to cure. Cuba. Uh, also, the Elwells, uh, there's church planters in the States, and um, one thing I didn't realize, but from reading their letter, was that the church plant they started in Terrell, Texas, near, uh, near, near Dallas, Fort Worth, is their 54th church they've started. That's incredible. And so, um, do, do be in prayer for that. They have some potentially exciting news. They may have a man that can take the church as a pastor there, and so do be in prayer if that's God's will, that that will work out out because he's already thinking about church number 55. And so uh, I do admire and I'm inspired and convicted by 
the Elwells just dedication to, to doing that. So pray for him. Uh, he's doing a lot of preaching. He's a very sought after missions conference speaker. I've heard him before. He's a great preacher, but he's preaching missions conferences, trying to raise uh, more support for missionaries around the world. And so do be in prayer for him. He's going to be in, I think, like 10 churches in a month or something like that. So quite a bit of preaching there. Uh, let's see here. The Thailand team uh, found out, unfortunately, they're back in lockdown. So be in prayer for them. They're back back doing online services. And we've been there, done that. So we understand. But um, they're certainly trying to do their best to make a tough situation better. They're back at sending out relief packages and things like that. So be in prayer for them as, this, as many people are suffering. They're trying to get the gospel to them as well as meet their material needs. And so uh, be in prayer for them with that. Uh, we praise the Lord for and also pray further uh, for phase one of their building project. They're just about ready to get started. They're meeting with uh, builders and designers, but they're still lacking some of the funds. They'll be in prayer uh, that they'll be able to get that done, have a church building and have their own property. And they've had some recent victories with that. And so uh, praise the Lord for that, but also continue uh, to pray. Uh, they're also asking us to pray for a, a trip they're going to be making back to the States to look at uh, for uh, particularly Brother Shook's kids to see some colleges and Bible colleges and pray about that. So they'd like to see those in person and pray about that after seeing it. So be in prayer for them. Travel is not an easy scenario these days. I'm sure all of you know it's the possibility of getting stuck sometimes is very real. So be in prayer for them. Uh, the Simmons family to Uruguay, uh, be in prayer for them. They're still waiting for Uruguay to open, but praise the Lord, they're working while they're waiting. And so um, exciting news that they're he's leading singing in Spanish they're going out soul winning with their Spanish church and uh, just staying busy. But they have good hopeful news that possibly in September, Uruguay will open up for those who've been vaccinated. So uh, keep them in your prayers that, that Uruguay will open its borders, that they can get to the field that God has called them to. And last update, um, our missionary brother Mark, to unspecified country, um, we're praising the Lord for continued work. And uh, again, this missionary's dedication is fantastic. But the more the work increases, the more they're sending labor. God is sending them laborers to work with them. And exciting to hear that that team is growing and uh, certainly seeing more souls get saved. In fact, they've seen a couple souls saved recently and had them baptized kind of in a like a picnic at their house uh, amongst some people that have never seen a baptism before. So pretty exciting there. So they're seeing souls get saved and they're praying for more witnessing opportunities. All right. If you read those letters, you'll, you'll hear about a pretty exciting opportunity that they had. And so um, what exciting times we live in Amen. with some missionaries that are still working and still doing great things for the Lord. Pastor? I'm going to get you just to close this in prayer if you can, but uh, let me mention as well, um, Brother Brian George, Argentina, pray for him to be able to return there to see his family. He came back to the States because his elderly father was very sick and they wasn't sure if he would even die, so he came back to see his dad, but now he's having trouble getting back into Argentina. So I think six or seven times now his flights have been canceled and and so on, and it was just with strict rules of Argentina only letting certain people, certain number of people in the country every day. So pray that he can get back home to Argentina and be with his family there as they're working as missionaries there. And then praise the Lord that Gary Tingson and his family they got to go to Australia. Uh, they arrived there. Um, Yesterday, yesterday it was, Friday or Saturday, and forget which day it was, our time, but uh, they got to fly over, and they made it safely, and now they're in a hotel for two weeks. So pray for Brother and Mrs. Tingson, they're in quarantine hotel for the first two weeks there in Australia, and I couldn't imagine living in one hotel room with my kids for two straight weeks, not being allowed out of that room. So <laughs> the ministry is going to be great, but two weeks in a hotel room, uh, not being able to go anywhere. Pray for them about that, if you would. Sure. <laughs> Let's pray for our missionary today. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for having such a wide array of God's servants that we get to know. We're certainly be inspired by, Lord God, and I pray that you would bring your blessing upon their ministry and upon their lives. Lord, we do think of the um, the Tingsons, God. We, we pray that you would give them the sanity they need to handle two weeks cooped up, Lord. God, we pray that you would more so bless them as they're as they get out and are able to witness the people and and get and get a new church started. Lord, I pray that you would guide them and bless their efforts. Lord.
So I pray for Brother George, dear God, that you would reunite him with his family. God, I pray that you'd, you'd move officials and change hearts and change policies, Lord. Shift the, uh, the perspective of people, Lord, to open up the border so he can get back in there and get back into the ministry and, and be a part of his family's lives. Dear Lord, I, I pray that you would bless our missionaries, Lord. Bless Brother Mark, Lord, as they're having multiple opportunities to witness to people in different ways. God, I pray that you would just continue to help intersect their paths with, with people, Lord, that they can lead to you. And I, and I thank you for their witness and their testimony. Lord, I pray for the Simmons, God, to be able to get to, to, get to Uruguay, Lord. I pray that the border does, in fact, open in September, Lord, and whatever the reasons would be, God, that they would be able to get in there, get studying Spanish, and, and, and get to work in the ministry there, Lord. God, we pray for the Elwells, Lord, as they're working in Terrell, Texas there. God, we pray that this individual you brought into their into the ministry, Lord, would be, if that's your will, God, that, that that individual would fit in. God, and you'd use them greatly for your glory. God, we pray that you'd bless the rest of our afternoon here, Lord. God, bless us as we go about our daily lives. Lord, help us to incorporate what Pastor preached today, Lord. We need you to strengthen us, strengthen our faith. And I pray you bless us, Lord, as we witness for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.